Hello all, welcome to part 11 and in this video we will talk about how to use libc functions in our assembly language programs. Now you're probably asking yourself weren't syscalls good enough for just about everything? Well the answer is yes uh, but if you start using those low-level syscalls then and if you want to create a slightly complicated program you would just end up using too many of them, lot more code to write uh, and definitely this is not something which is desirable because assembly language is very very difficult to debug if you compare it with other high level languages. So what we really want is to be able to leverage the standard C library on Linux which is libc which has tons of useful information. And this video will focus on calling libc functions from assembly. Now the only things you need to remember when you invoke libc library calls is the following. A. All the library calls which you want to invoke in your program need to be defined using the keyword extern right at the top. Second, whenever you call a libc function, the arguments to that function need to be put on the stack and they need to be put in reverse order. What do I mean by that? If you call a libc function which takes in four arguments a, b, c and d, then you need to put them on the stack in the order d, c, b and a. Right? You can put them using a push instruction or any other instruction. Now, here is the other important thing to maintain a proper state for ESP, ensure that after your libc function call returns, you adjust the stack accordingly. Finally, we would want to compile the program now with GCC and not with LD because it's much easier to do with GCC. Now GCC expects a main entry point to be there instead of underscore start or any other random name. So we'll stick to main. Now, however, you note that GCC does have options with which you could given any other starting point, but we'll stick with main. Having said that, let me take you to the code now. And what I have done is I've recreated the hello world program written using syscalls, now using libc function calls. Now the two function calls I'm going to go ahead and use are printf and exit. So what I told you was the arguments to the libc function calls need to be there on the stack. Now, how do you find that out? Very simply, let's open up a new tab and let me do a man uh, three printf and this gives me the programmer manual page for printf. Now, the easiest way to invoke printf is just to feed it the pointer to the string which you want to print. So I have already defined message in here and of course you would want uh, message to be null terminated and what I'm doing is I'm pushing the address of message on the stack and then I'm just issuing a call to printf. Then after printf returns I adjust the stack size by 4. This is just going to ensure that the stack is back to where it was before. After that, I'm going to move the value EA, uh, A into EAX and then call exit. Now, exit would just exit the program. So it doesn't make any sense to do any ESP uh, pointer arithmetic after that, right? So let's go ahead and link and assemble this, assemble and link, sorry. And what I've done is I've changed compile.sh for this program a little bit here. Instead of LD, I'm using GCC. Uh, also, one of the things which I forgot to mention that now the entry point is main. Right, so let's run compile.sh, libc. There you go. Let's run libc. And if you notice, the hello world gets printed on the screen. 
Now let's load this up in GDB to look at how the disassembled code looks like. We need to break on main right now. Let's run the program and let's disassemble. There you go. Uh, and here is what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and track the stack as well. So let's just track uh, the top of the stack. There we are. And go to the next instruction. Now if you look at the top of the stack, uh, we basically like have the pointer to the message we want to print, which we can verify. Uh, with this, sorry. There you go. So we have hello world on there. So let's now move on to the next instruction while still keeping an eye on the top of the stack. So let's just do a step I. And if I do disassemble, this would go ahead and continue into printf, which is something we don't really care about. So let's kind of go ahead and create a breakpoint here. For the next instruction after printf finishes execution. So printf has printed it. Uh, and now if I still continue to look at the top of the stack, it would still exactly be the same value as before, right? And this is where we do our little pointer arithmetic. And if I kind of go back here, we want to reset the stack back to this value. And if you notice, the stack has now been restored to where it was previously pointing to. And then after that, you just go ahead and continue the program and exit, right? So this is a very, very simple example. Uh, but frankly, this illustrates pretty much any uh, libc function which you can use in your assembly program. All you need to ensure is the arguments go properly inside the stack and then you make the appropriate call and then you eventually after the call, you adjust the value of ESP accordingly, right? Fantastic. Uh, so that's pretty much what I had in mind for this video. Try this out yourself and play with different Lipsy calls. Thank you very much.